Hi, my name is Sean Olson. Today I'm going to share with you some of the features and some of the tips and tricks that you can use with PropLine, a parametric distribution tool by Wallworm. Now you may have used the spacing tool inside of 3ds Max. It's pretty cool, but it has a lot of limitations. And PropLine fills in many of the needs that you might have where the spacing tool falls short. For example, we'll show you one of the limitations of the spacing tool as it currently exists instead of Max. So here's an example of a limitation. I want to select these three objects and distribute them uh, along here. Um, I could now hit pick path and I'll have to pick the path names here. Cross the park and now you'll notice that it plopped them all as one group in the center but I want, had wanted them to distribute along and also if I rotate my view to see the ends of this because I do have that there but as soon as I rotate my view using the spacing tool your objects disappear until you click the thing again which is kind of inconvenient it also is limited to the the way you can distribute things so we're gonna show you how PropLine can do this more conveniently for you so in this case I have these three props and I'm gonna use them along this um, the path here and this path is a core of X object which is another wall worm type of geometry and it's controlled by a spline here at the bottom what I want to do is select that spline and these three objects and I'm going to run a script that comes inside of Wallworm called create prop line with selection and what it does is it adds those props along the path now they're not oriented how I want but that's the next part of our little uh, discussion here inside of the modify inside of the modify tab of 3ds max you can control a lot of the things about how uh, the props are distributed we have global transformations and then we can also independently translate these based off of what the object is okay so in this case I want these uh, fence posts to all be in the middle and I want the water fountain and the benches to be on the sides. So what I'm going to do is launch this manager. What this manager does is it takes the current selection when launched and shows you all of the props that belong to the prop lines. And if we click one, you'll it'll get selected in the scene, the original node. What we're going to do is add a custom attribute to all these props. So when we do that, each of these props has its own set of values that we can offset its transformations. So I want this post to be in the middle of this walkway. And what I do is select the lamp post and then in its translation override, move the Y axis over to whatever the middle of this would be. In this case, uh, I think this path is 96 wide. I'm going to actually make this path a little wider, make this a little bit easier to look at. So we know it's 128, so if we make this 64, it'll be right in the middle of this path. So now we want to go up to the park benches these guys need to be rotated 90 degrees. So we're going to override the rotation and make those 90. I'm also going to override the vector of these and I want it to be an average and I'm going to go back some out here and I want the same thing with the drinking fountain I want it to go back in the Y and there we go now I don't want this uh, bench out here so I'm gonna go over here to 
the offsets and move this in a little bit. And let's go look at the end here, make sure it's fine. That looks good. And now we have this all along there just fine. Now, here's another thing in prop line. Right now, this all of these are actually just one geometric object, but the transformations for each of these props is stored internally. So I can instantiate them right now by clicking this button. But before I do that, I notice something else. There's probably too many water fountains here. So we're going to go back over to our prop line manager. And in the drinking fountain, I'm going to use the skip probability. So I'm going to say that each one of these has a 65% chance of getting skipped. Now I think that they're a little bit clustered here, so I'm going to randomly change the random seed generator for this until it gets to something that's closer to what I want, which this is pretty good. There's two here, but I'm going to delete one after we instantiate it. So once we have it how we want, if we if we need these to be actual objects in the scene, we go down to the instantiate function, and now these are instances of the original objects which you can then move and translate however you want. And again, because these are proxies, I can go in here and, and disable the proxy to see what it looks like up close and then re-enable it for performance reasons. So now we're going to go over and add these trees. And we're going to probably make two sets of prop lines with these on each side here. Now we're going to select all of these trees and actually I'm going to explain another thing. These are kind of high detail. It's best with PropLine to use low detail objects. So I'm going to create a PropLine object and I'm going to go down to the performance tab down here. I'm going to hit display as boxes. This will help me right now to make this work faster. Now I'm going to select same spline I had picked earlier and now I'm going to select these trees add them to the list and for this tree for this set of trees we're going to use a different set of parameters we don't need the manager for this one but we're going to distribute these guys randomly and we're going to offset this back behind the tree, behind the chairs. We're going to randomly rotate the trees Again, like the other one, we wanted it to be offset. That's good. And we want it to the end to also be offset some. There we go. And we might offset these back a little bit further behind there. Okay. And then we just go down here and instantiate these. And there's our trees. And they're all just kind of randomly rotated. If you need to tweak it, you just go to it and, and move it around. And now it was important that I use display as boxes because it would have been uh, pretty slow uh, to generate the mesh for this and with PropLine. So, Again, there are different things in PropLine to help you with performance. Uh, and you'll find those in the performance uh, checkbox or rollout. So another thing to, to learn is that the prop line object when you make the instantiation and they become instances are now children of the original prop line object and it becomes deactivated. So if I double click this object it's selected 
all of the trees because this is the prop line that controls those that controlled them to place them there now they're children of this if I need to recreate these I can deselect this prop line that I have selected here and then delete all of those go into my prop line object and reactivate it and then we can go and tweak any of these so say we needed these to randomly rotate on the Y just just slightly between negative 2 and 2 and on the X also negative 2 and 2 just to add a little bit more variation and then to even add some variation on this 100 minus 140 so they're not all identically spaced away and then again go down here instantiate so now their rotation in, is a little bit more varied and spacing again this prop line is deactivated still also it's the one that controlled these objects if I need to get back to it again it's right here but let's let's go ahead and add the trees to the other side of the path so we're gonna go back to this prop line turn it back on and this time the offset we're going to make it positive but it needs to go a lot further to get on the other side of that and I'm gonna change the seed value to get some more uh, rotations and offsets bring these down a little bit I may have to delete some trees in this clustered area over here alright and we instantiate and now we have this path and we're gonna delete some of these um, extra it looks like the instantiate function actually didn't do uh, skip any of the ones that were skipped but that's okay I'll, we'll fix that in, in an update to prop line this was a brief introduction into using prop line and some of the new features including the prop line manager I hope that uh, it's been useful and helpful for you in understanding some of the ways PropLine can help you. Look forward to some new videos coming soon that will show you how to use PropLine to enhance your workflow. Again, my name is Sean Olson. You can learn more about me at my website, seanolson.net, and you can always get the latest Wallworm tools at wallworm.com. Thank you and have a good day.